Help me, I'm trapped in the library with the the patron goddess of theater going. <laughs> she won't let me go until I play D&D with her. Help me out. <laughs> Episode 7, Requiem of the Golden Witch. Good morning. Scheduled for today is the funeral of the Golden Witch and her game. The days of the game are already over, and nothing remains but fond memories. Here the cold hard truth will be revealed, and death will come to the game. There is a bit of difficulty to this one. What does that mean? So a not bit. necessarily that the game is difficult, but that there is a bit of difficulty. <laughs> well, we were talking about like what like what is this game gonna look like, right? Mm -hmm. Because Featherine is like, I, I'm checking my answers now. This is what I'm doing. I, I wish I could come to you and tell you that we've gone through exhaustively every other puzzle in the game and like re tried to resolve it, but we haven't had the time. <laughs> We we've done a lot of thinking. Though. Like, we have like, not stopped thinking. Right. I don't want I don't want to short sell the amount of thinking we've done. And like it, and a lot of what we've been thinking about goes back to a lot of our theories that based around Shannon and Canon. Now that we've all but confirmed that they're I think I think it's safe to say that we can confirm that the same person at this point. Yeah. Right? Otherwise the whole ending of that last game doesn't make sense. I can't but, wait to open episode seven and Shannon and Cannon turn to the camera and say in red, Actually, by was, the way, we're different people. We never had anything to do with each other. I don't know why you would think that. <laughs> um, the, like, the main thing that, that's been giving us a lot of pause while we've been thinking has been stuff like uh, one of my original solutions for the first game board did involve a body double. And part of the part of the mythos we had speculated for the island and uh, came out with a way to have that body be there. Um... I don't know if I find that compelling anymore um, because it seems we like, what does it mean for Shannon to die? Like, it, like the one I was talking about is specifically the game, the first game board where Shannon's body is hidden in the back and obscured by everything. And yet Cannon is still there standing over and watching. What does it mean for Cannon to be alive and Shannon to be dead? If they're the same person mm -hmm. that I think that that's the part that still remains unclear to me. And I don't know how we look at scenes like that with that knowledge now. Um, Seems like the body doubles theory still works. Maybe, but like, George is like in tears over the death of his fiance. He doesn't get a look though. So he's, but he wouldn't recognize his fiance standing in the same room next to his father looking very far. Oh, sorry. We mean that part. Yeah. So that bit, that's, that's the tricky bit. Cause the, the debate we've been having, right. Is, um, very much about like, does everybody know that Shannon is canon? Wait, Cause, yeah, right? go ahead. Because because if they don't, that'd be weird. If there's literally a master of disguise here that has everybody fooled, and right, I don't, two different I don't people. think either of us believe that's the case. But I, I think I think I, I yeah, go ahead. But sorry. if that's not the case, and everybody does know they're the same person, and this is just some way of depicting their differing identities, roles so on in different situations then it makes no sense for george to be standing there looking at the same person and being like oh no right fiance died yeah i mean admittedly george doesn't get to look at the body but still mm -hmm. i mean maybe canon wasn't actually standing there it mm. was kind of weird that he would he got to be that far in the room and no and george didn't and you know no one commented on it while while Hideyoshi would try to keep other people away from the bodies, right? Maybe maybe Cannon wasn't actually there at that time. Oh no! Which again, I don't know how to reconcile. I don't, I don't know the framework by which we address that. I feel like part of what we're going to learn is is going to be like, what is the framework through which we understand scenes where Cannon and Shannon are in the same place, or one of them is dead and one of them is alive? Because mm. we also get red truths about how both of them die. Yeah. And it's not necessarily consistent. So I think maybe I think maybe the trick where one of the red truths is vacuous and referring to a historical person with that same name might also come to pass. Now, because now we we have two sets of red truths: some about Cannon and some about Shannon, and we've had weird stuff among them. I and if they are indeed the same person, then by necessity, one of those sets of red truths is going to be vacuous. My my thought was potentially we get all that stuff from Featherine about like what it means for a piece to die mm -hmm. and players abandoning the board and so on. And it's like, what if it's that? Because we've already established that Canon and Shannon aren't humans. Right. They're they're so they're furniture. Maybe for furniture to die is something other than for 
the human being who is Shannon and Cannon to die. And yeah, I guess I still find it weird seeing scenes of George grieving over that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's not delay it any longer. Let let, let, let I just wanted to let you all know where our thoughts were at and like while we I'm not going to sit here we can't catalog every single thing for you unfortunately. Like we're still obviously turning this over in our heads. Don't stop thinking, right? Yep. ABT. Always be thinking. <laughs> let's uh <sighs> All right. Did you bring your dice? <laughs> Got my. I can roll a d8 for you if you'd like. I've got my fishing tackle box full of dice. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, illusions to illusions, and dreams to dreams. A dream is something drawn in the sand between the coming and receding waves. Something so fragile that it's wiped blank every time a wave comes in. So the heartless might sneer, saying that drawing such things is useless and meaningless. However, no wave will ever come again to wipe away the dream she drew. And now that final beautiful dream of hers will not disappear for all eternity. Come, try and picture it. It is as though the rays of the gentle afternoon sun on a warm spring day simply forgot to grow dim ever again. It truly is such a wonderful thing. Witness to your final dream. Publius Virgilia Morrow. Oh, her power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hands. You too, huh? (laughs) You too, huh? Yeah, yeah. The suspects were gathered in a room, and several inquisitors of heresy were reporting on the results of their investigation. Their uniforms closely resembled those of House of Eisern Jungfrau, but they were slightly different. Also different were the badges signifying their department. Then came the sound of someone clapping their hands once. It was the lead female Inquisitor. She was announcing that all reasoning had been completed. So this isn't. Uh, do you want to be whoever the new sure. Inquisitor is? As has been shown, it is all quite clear. Know that the preceding logic has proven the non-existence of your alibi. At the other end of her pointing finger was a quivering maid with frightened eyes. Her name was... (laughs) Fuck you, game. Ah, absolutely fuck you. No, that's not important. What matters now is that she could have entered the closed room study where the victim was found whenever she pleased. And furthermore, that her claimed alibi for the time of the crime has been proven to contradict the facts. Shaking, the maid tried to continue in her illogical pleading, but all of her statements had already been seen through. With this, we conclude our proof of the who done it and the how done it. Know that your position as the culprit is now an unshakable fact. You must be joking. Why would I kill the master I loved and respected so? I have no motive, no reason. Who did it and how? Know that establishing these is more than sufficient. Please, allow me to speak. Know that motives are unnecessary in mysteries. The Inquisitor spoke coldly. After finishing her witch's prayer, Virgilia stepped back from the coffin, which lay on an altar bedecked with many beautiful roses. In her place, Bachelor moved to the front of the coffin, wearing his territory lord's cape. Though the cape was supposed to represent dignity and majesty, it somehow made Bachelor look smaller. Bachelor held a book with a majestic binding in his hand. It was a game record that had just been written, using the image of the f- Maria's uh, grimoire. <laughs> Don't think I forgot about that. So this is the image that's used when Angie's showing around the grimoire that she has. Or perhaps it was a tale. A game. Or else a fragment. Written in it was the dream that would be more enjoyable for her than any other. Battler pressed it against his forehead and contemplated for some time. And then he kissed it. 
and laid it gently in the coffin. It rested upon her chest. She looked like a little girl clutching her favorite stuffed animal as she drifted off to sleep. This is the sole tale that I have to offer up to you. This tale will be shut up with you in your coffin for all eternity. So no one will be able to read it except for you there in your coffin. Shut away in the cat box, the only unchanging, inviolable, eternal tale. <sighs> this way no one will be able to defile it. No one can deny it, and no one can argue against it. This is just between me and her, just the two of us, our one and only certain truth. So... So what? She was she was quite alive at the end of the last one. Why is she in a coffin now? Um. Obviously, it's like figurative and symbolic, but like, right. what's going on there? I feel like whiplash. We just practically had the fucking magical wedding and shit and the duel and all that, and now suddenly, maybe it's because in order to, because in order to win that, in order to win that game in. in keep Erica from winning, right? They had to reveal a truth that was so like crucial to the to the identity of the witch that with that truth on the board her time is limited. Maybe. Hmm. Oh. That's What the hell background is this? <sighs> Those bastards. A man dashed through a town wrapped in twilight. The daytime hustle and bustle of this beautiful village, which combined with the, with the traditional with the orderly in the classic style of the last century, now seemed like a mere dream. The orange setting sun was already hidden behind the clock tower, and the narrow alleyway was rapidly descending into darkness. As the gas lights began to turn on, they only made the darkness of the twilight stand out all the more. The man sprinted. There was no time. He had to hurry. He'd had several experiments to do and things he had to check in it. It had all taken longer than he expected. <sighs> yeah, there's no mistake here. Oh, hold on. The who done it and the how done it are more than enough in the mystery genre. <laughs> in the mystery genre, the motive or the why done it is given the lowest priority. To have a murder, you need to have a culprit and he needs to commit a crime. Motive isn't required for that. So it is usually the most ignored element. In fact, these days there are even some who call it unnecessary. If you find the culprit with nothing but the Y done it... Oh, hold on, this is gonna be the thing, guy. If you find the culprit with the nothing but the Y done it, that's no mystery, that's propaganda. However... However, just because of that fact, it doesn't mean you can neglect the motive. The heart. It's weird, because he seemed to be running through, like, the archetypal mystery setting classic yeah. mystery setting like the one you would find in a Sherlock Holmes right mm -hmm. like the, the gas lamp in particular being like that. oh yeah yeah we both know how much fun she'll be having in her final sleep so I doubt anyone could disturb it after all who could possibly disturb a sleeping child smiling at a happy dream <laughs> someone call for me <laughs> no alright I'll see myself out thanks you should get an exterminator, Battler. You really There's rats in here. <laughs> wow, well, rude! Come, it is time for us to leave. If we're too noisy, we'll wake her from her dream. Eh, you're right. What else should you do with a sleeping kid except put a blanket on them, turn off the lights, and walk away quietly? After looking at the coffin one last time, Virgilia turned around quietly. Battler did the same, but then he stopped and turned to face the rose-covered altar. Battler offered up his final words within his art. As long as those words didn't leave his mouth, no one would be able to know what they were. However, those words of the heart caused Battler's expression to change several times. At first he frowned sadly. Then his face clouded with remorse, and then, 
changed to a bitter, exasperated smile. It flashed through several varied expressions. And then the final expression that crossed his face was, surprisingly, a gentle smile. <laughs> I got a snakle tooth now. Something rose to Battler's lips. However, he bit it back down. There could certainly be no words to describe the many feelings he kept in his chest. So, saying anything aloud would probably be crude. Battler understood this and stopped himself from speaking once more with a wry smile. Thank you. Oh, I have done nothing to deserve your gratitude. No, you did. For the iced tea earlier? It was very <laughs> refreshing. Thank you. I'll leave the rest to you. After seeing Virgilia nod back at him, Battler turned away from the altar one more time and left the chapel. Virgilia also disappeared, and with that, all disturbances that might have interrupted her blissful sleep had vanished. The Inquisitors of Heresy listened with calm, no, scornful gazes. They listened to the frantic babbling of the maid accused of murdering her master. However, nothing she said could bury the fault in her own alibi. They were all mere emotional arguments. I loved and respected the master so much. I had no motive for killing him. No matter how much she spoke, it only made her look more and more like the floundering true culprit struggling pathetically. The requirements for the whodunit and the howdunit had been satisfied. As for the why done it, the motive, the heart, no matter how much she spoke of gratitude for her master, who had been graciously who had graciously given her a job when she'd been left by the wayside after various misfortunes, it didn't help her case in the slightest in the mystery genre. Therefore, her motive didn't matter. All that could have just be squeezed out of the culprit afterwards. The page turned sound. Interesting. An Inquisitor of Heresy took out a roll of parchment and held it forth, cutting off the maid's sobs and protests. This is how you committed the crime. Know that this indictment has been received by the Great Court and that your arrest has been approved. Here is the warrant for your arrest. Motive is unnecessary. Know that such a thing is completely extraneous to the matter of pinpointing the culprit. Please, allow me to speak. Know that we of the SSVD possess methods of forcing unrepentant criminals to reveal the truth. With these interrogation tools, blessed by the powers of justice, we inquisitors of heresy will strap up your limbs, burn you, crush you, stretch you, and hang you, and in so doing, wring the red truth out of you. It isn't even necessary for you to confess. AIDS. Arrest that maid. Wow, they're really per turning up the Inquisition bit of it, huh? Yeah. It wasn't me. I didn't kill the master. No. No! Who, Who the is fuck this? is this edgelord? Who is this edgelord? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Hold it right there. <laughs> you got the wrong culprit. I think we can agree that this is... Absolutely. <laughs> A man kicked the door open, and the Inquisitors were all shocked at the sight of him. See, Why are you here? Know that this case is no longer your responsibility. <laughs> Quiet! You find one person without an alibi and just assume that she's the culprit? Do you really think there's no need for a motive? For a heart in a crime? <laughs> crimes are committed by people. There are no crimes without a heart. I'll never accept a theory that neglects the heart. Know that your obsession over the why done it is simply embarrassing. The why done it is unnecessary. Such a thing can be extracted easily through interrogation. Even the great court has already acknowledged that this woman is the culprit. <laughs> True, the great court does assume that everyone besides the maid has an alibi. That's just because they heard you say so and they've mistaken your overconfidence and conceit for wisdom. <laughs> if any one of the other suspects loses their alibi, your evidence so far proves nothing. Just look at how pathetic some of these other alibis are. Did the co clock in the reception hall chime midnight at exactly the right time? Did the dog by the back door bark at everyone? Huh? So you managed to prove the maid's alibi false? Congratulations! But does it end there? It may have been possible for her to do it, but does she have any motive at all? Are the alibis for the others absolutely perfect? 
This maid wasn't the only one with a false alibi. You have to keep on searching if you want to find the others. Was there some sort of grudge against the victim or money-related problem? Don't abandon motive. Don't abandon the heart. Dry mysteries where the motive could just be figured out later aren't worth anyone's time. If the maid isn't the culprit, then why did she fake an alibi? Even asking such a question is a waste of time. Know that we just have to interrogate her, ring out the red truth, and have her signed in red blood to everything that happened at the time of the crime. This, I, so I know it's hard to pick up, but this is, this music that's playing right now seems to be a very tense and, and a tense version of, um, I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a do-do-do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you can hear it on occasion and it's like, huh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I forgot. I need to speak my lines now. This fucking... Anime reject. What does he look like in the? I <laughs> hold on. We need to see. Yeah, we do need to see. <sighs> yeah. They there gave it him is. more cleavage in the new art, though. Bold, bold. That's true. They did give him more cleavage. That is a bold decision. Also, that we don't get to see uh, his affiliation here because uh, his armband is facing away. And mm. it... <laughs> yeah, you could probably do that. You could just use that torture of yours to squeeze out everything, frankly and objectively, as seen from the eyes of God. But you know what? I'll never accept mysteries and theories that lack heart. I have already taken over responsibility for this case. I even have a decree right here. Come now, aides, know that there is no reason to hesitate. I order you to arrest this maid. When she gave this order, her subordinates hesitated, looking back and forth between their superior and that man. <laughs> I won't let you. The real culprit's a different person. It's possible to use motive to find them, and the alibi trick is an old one. You can't neglect the heart. There's no need for that. We just have to find the suspicious ones who could have committed the crime, interrogate them, and squeeze out the red truth. On the off chance that they aren't the culprit, then we just have to interrogate the next suspect. <laughs> you call that reasoning? Stand back. We will arrest that woman. Know that this maid is the culprit. <laughs> it is forbidden for a servant to be the culprit. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you me? fucking kidding me? Are you fucking... Wait, does that hold for all... For all... Ah! Does that hold for all games? No, no. There's hold no on. fucking way. There's no, fu There's no, no fucking no, way. No, hold on. There's got to be a context for this red truth that we don't know yet, because that's not the fucking case. Oh my god. There is no way that is the fucking case. What if it is? <laughs> it sounds more like a Knox rule than anything else, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, like it's just something that's like, oh, oh, like he, this is a this is a stylistic thing where like, okay, and the and the and the thing with those before has been, you can you can break them as long as there's like been a reason shown to do it. Oh my God. Shannon Cannon aren't servants. Boom. They're servants of the Golden Eagle. But if they weren't. <laughs> Then it would get us around that. The fuck is... <laughs> the words of power blasted away the aides, trying to arrest the maid. <laughs> Van Dien's 20 rules number 11, bitch! There's 20 now? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We're, we're doing this again? We even talked about Van Dien's rules, didn't we? Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Is this Van Dien? Is that who this is? I hope so. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> if you want to torture this maid, make sure you double check the alibis for the second wife and her lover first. <laughs> Those two already have a clear alibi for the time of the crime. <laughs> that an alibi? Damn, a fool like you couldn't understand no matter how he's going to make it for you, huh? If you want to call yourself the head inquisitor, try and figure out at least that much for yourself. Until then, I'll be taking that maid's arrest warrant. Then what about you? Can you prove that this maid didn't commit the crime? Know that she was clearly away from the kitchen at the time of the crime. What was she doing then, and where? She can't prove it, I can't prove it, and you can't prove it. No one can. That's why we have no choice but to use these torture devices to interrogate her until the red truth is squeezed out. You can squeeze as much blood and truth in the true culprit as you damn well please. However, I won't let you interrogate or torture anyone who isn't the culprit. This is why everyone says you're too soft. All the suspicious must be interrogated. 
That is how we Inquisitors of Heresy conduct our witch trials. That's right, we are Inquisitors of Heresy. Felling evil witches is our job. However, we mustn't risk hurting the innocent. We mustn't put them under suspicion. All humans have their own personal truths. Those should only be exposed when they commit crimes. We've been given the right to expose them. But there's one thing we can't do. What? No one, not even God, has the right to expose the innocent truths of those who have not sinned. I am the fabled good cop. <laughs> <laughs> the maid finally realized that he was trying to protect her. I don't know who you are, but thank you very much. I'm really not the culprit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Your boyfriend said he'd be willing to give up everything to prove your alibi. You should thank him. That kid said the honor and reputation are worth nothing compared to you. But if he does that, he'll... <laughs> it won't come to that. Exposing the secrets between lovers is a job for third-rate magazines. That's not mystery. I'll never allow for heartless reasoning. And then for the first time, the man's sullen expression relaxed, and he patted the maid's head roughly. I'm sure you two will be happy together. Oh, okay, hold on. Vivian has asked me to pet her head. You happy now? We had to method act it's, it. No, we didn't. <laughs> Still, meeting together in secret while on the job is hardly praiseworthy. Try to keep that to a minimum, all right? Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, finger guns. Finger guns? Finger guns. You do it like this? <laughs> you learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Remember it. <laughs> Remember the name, kid. <laughs> These words were only heard by the two of them. The man had learned of her innocence, which could only be proven by exposing the secrets of a pair of young lovers. And he had rushed about in search of a solution, resentful of the arrogance of those trying to expose this by forcible means. The point of theory making is not to create a culprit or to trample the truths that lie in the hearts of those who have not sinned. If you want to play the detective, don't neglect the heart. Otherwise, we're just intellectual rapists. Don't forget it! Sound of a rat sneezing in the distance. <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh, there's a rat here! Get it out! <laughs> when the man spoke, the Inquisitors no longer had any way to argue back. This man's name is... Will. <laughs> Steve, Chief Inquisitor. Will. And yet that's not what everyone used to call him. Head Inquisitor of Heresy of the SSVD, the 8th District of Repentance Enforcement Agency of the Great Court of Heaven. Wizard Hunting Wright. Wizard Hunting Wright. Huh. Like, like, like Nick? <laughs> <laughs> like like Phoenix, right? Laval. I wonder if that's a reference to a thing. Uh, you go ahead and look that up. I'll, I'll uh... <clears throat> this is the last thing I have to pass on to you guys. If you want to be the next wizard hunting right, remember it. Carve it into your soul, kid, no matter what. Oh, yo. Oh, yo. Interesting. New sequence. Oh, hell yeah. This is a very different theme than all the other opening themes I've been. Much sadder. Oh, here we go, here we go. Why was Jessica in the same shot as Ronave? I don't know. What is the what is the importance behind that? Hey! Yeah. <laughs> But you know who's not going to be in this shot, and it's going to be really sad that she's not the number one rat. <laughs> it's so sad. Sad for who? For me!
Although I will point out, like, one thing that's happened a lot more in this chapter is they've gone a lot to a lot of lengths to make more realistic. Not necessarily, like, photo-perfect, but, like, definitely a lot closer to, like, photorealistic images and background elements. Mm. With less, like, like it seems like a very intentional choice. I am not like finding that anything on who the fuck a Will Wright would be. There were two actors by that William name. William Wright? Yeah, n- B- nothing relevant. Will? Like, what, what, is there another name a Will Wright could take? Like a Bill? No. Hmm... Will I'm sure people will let us know in the comments. Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah. it's a spoiler, in which case in we which case find don't. out later. Yeah. Quietly, quietly, the rain fell down. The rain of sadness dripped down to the outer walls of the chapel, quietly washing away the dust of the world of the living. The chapel doors were open. During a wedding, only those with invitations are allowed inside. However, during a funeral, the doors are open to all who remember the deceased. Is that true? So this must be a funeral. Can I just go to any funeral I want? If you remember the deceased. I mean, it, it, there are some funerals that are, like, open like that, yeah. Like, they'll put an announcement in the paper and be like, hey, funeral for this person is happening on this day. I mean, generally, if you go, you're going to have to, you know, like, at, you're going to run into the family there. Mm-hmm. Like, and you're going to have to probably explain why you're here, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, like, that certainly is not unheard of. I'm here because I remember the deceased. I think I saw his name in a newspaper once. Get the fuck out of this funeral. (laughs) A shadow holding an umbrella approached the chapel. I didn't do it this time. I thought about it for a long time. I can't hear the phrase, a shadow, (laughs) without wanting to do it now. It was Will. A new visitor approaches. We just got an achievement. It's not going to show up on the recording, but... (laughs) What up, everyone? It's time for William! (laughs) <laughs> a reception desk had been set up at the chapel's entrance. As the shadow approached, Cannon, who had been sitting at his desk, stood up and welcomed him with a bow. This is the reception desk. We are collecting the names of all mourners. If you would sign in here, please. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm not a mourner. I'm here to meet with someone. You came to a funeral to meet with someone? A dubious expression rose to Cannon's face. Will pulled an envelope from his pocket and showed him the sender's name. My apologies. Please, enter. <laughs> Thanks! Could at least have one of those. Uh, th- <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm sure she will be pleased. Cannon handed him one of a set of golden roses, which were being handed out to all the mourners. Will took it, silently bowed his head, and entered the chapel. Inside the chapel, several people who appeared to be the family of the deceased were gathered, and they all seemed to be recalling memories of the departed. Oh, Beatrice. No, give, give, me, give me a good one. Ooh, Beatrice. 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 <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Father, please take care. Why don't you rest in the waiting room for a bit? I don't have any lines to say, but I want you to know that I'm here. I killed her. I did it. Oh, that's absurd. How could that be, Rosasama? Father's really bawling, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Beatorica! Huh? Oh, how was that? Huh? Right on? <laughs> right on? Spot on, right? I'm sure he didn't cry this much when Mother passed away. Hey. Hey. Now's not the time to say things like that. Then when it but it's the right place to say things right <laughs> then. <laughs> some sobbed, unable to conceal their tears, and some spoke softly of old memories. They were all remembering the dead in their own way, it seemed. When Will approached the altar, several people turned around. Of course none of them knew who Will was. Pre- paying this no mind. Will walked in front of the casket on the altar, which seemed to be buried under golden roses. Inside the casket, there was no corpse. Instead, as though it lay there in place of a body, was a single, thick book with extravagant binding. The space all around it was filled with countless golden roses. There were words printed on the book's cover. 
to my beloved Beatrice, October 5th, 1986. <laughs> Miss Beatrice. If it was Mrs., then uh, forgive me. I've never met you, but... However, let me to express my condolences. He took the rose he had received from the, from the reception area and placed it in the casket. He had absolutely no connection to the woman called Beatrice. However, since he had come to visit at a funeral, he had to show this minimum amount of respect for the dead. As part of this, Will prayed for the passage of the dead into the next world. Pardon me, but who might you be? I am Usharomia Kraus. I am serving as the chief mourner. I am chief among mourners. First of my name. <laughs> 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 this is my child, Leon. What the fuck? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? No. Your child, Leon. What the fuck is going on? Is this trans, Jessica? What if you were right? <laughs> what if we heard read that? That'd be really funny. Huh. Just just <gasps> to be safe, do you want to be Leon? Sure. Pleased to meet you. I'm Usharomia Leon. Have we ever heard the name Leon before? Where the fuck is this coming from? I have no idea. Okay, if so that means Every fucking chapter of this game blindsides me. Every time. Every time. <laughs> fuck. What the fuck? Oh, this is great. I love this game. Okay. Okay, hear me out. Yeah. What if Jessica was trans? <laughs> <laughs> Leon? <laughs> Who the hell are you? It's written as some kanji I can't read, but pronounced Leon. I guess it's a bit strange for a Japanese name. I'm not going to recognize those off the top of my head, so if that, was, if that was a pattern we have seen before, please feel free to let us know in the comment section. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. On. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, my fuck. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> I like how we got so blindsided that we almost didn't notice that. Oh, no. It's oh. absolutely clued in somewhere. Oh, no. This is gettable. Oh, no. How do you, how do you reach this? Oh, my God. This is going to keep me awake for weeks. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, the fact that Krauss is introducing them as, uh, uh, as his son. Mm -hmm. Right. But they have the name from the uh, orphanage. Did Kraus also, try? Is that one of the ons? Ons, or is it a different? Let me, let me, let me just pull up a fucking kanji real quick. Yeah. Okay. Good. We've made it less than forty minutes in, and we've already had to stop like several times to be like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, this is this shit's important. This, this shit important. is vital. What the fuck? Don't tell me our random our random ongoing joke. This is not the same on. Okay, 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 this okay. This is not the same on. This is not the same on. All right, I'm glad we have that established. Okay. So, there might... There, we'll table that for now. Will stared at Leon's face, wearing a confused expression. He hadn't seemed particularly interested in Kraus, but Leon had apparently drawn some sort of reaction from him. Rather than interest, it was more as though he felt like something was out of place. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, dude. <laughs> it's even funnier because also who the fuck is Will? Right? Like, neither of you are Will? in this story. You Will? don't even go here. Will, I can understand because we've already established what his role is, right? He he works for vaguely the same department as as, uh, as um, Iser and Jungfrau. Maybe. Right? And well, like, or at least vaguely works in that scope. But like, so we and and he's even said like he has no relation to this. So it's it's fine that he's coming out of nowhere. 
because he's said, I have no relation to this before now. But also, so we don't have to like try to f sort out what the fuck he's doing here. If he, if he has something to do with Eiserna Jungfrau, then this is the meta world. I don't think it's that he has something to do with Eiserna Jungfrau. It, 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 like, oh, you're right. That is what the fuck. Ugh. All right. So, fuck. like, what the hell is going on? You know what this reminds you know what this reminds me of? What? I can spoil this show, right? This show's been around long enough. I have no idea what show you mean. I'm Buffy. You know when they suddenly it's the beginning of like season three was it three or four? Oh, no, it was yeah. four. Season four. Where they suddenly introduce someone and like, Hi, I'm your sister. I've been here all the time. <laughs> Don't worry about nope. it. <laughs> Haven't been. Kraus Saba. Madam says it is about time. Nah, I see. <clears throat> I mean, they're also holding a funeral for Vagers that is a book, so I don't think this is literally happening in any, like, yeah. sensible version of them. But it's it's still, it's still, like, it's it's different, right? Because we, haven't, we yeah. haven't heard people talk about Eiserna Jungfrau and all of that stuff and so on outside of the, like, or the SSVD. world stuff. Well, I, I should say the SSVD. I was, I was, I was that, that, because Eiserna Jungfrau being a particular part of that. We're good at this. <clears throat> I see. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're too noisy in here, it may disturb the dead. I've been told that the waiting room has been readied. Shall we move over there? When Krauss called out to everyone, they began to move towards the chapel waiting room. My apologies. Leon, could you entertain our guest for now? I will guide the others to the waiting room. Yes, father. It looked like a natural conversation with no awkwardness for either father or child. <laughs> father and child, is it? Yes, but why do you ask? Oh, <laughs> Sharomia Krause's child is supposed to be Jessica. Jessica's my little sister. Excuse me? So they are doing that. <laughs> Don't worry, I've always been here. I'm so confused. Don't fucking worry about it. I, uh... The only way the only way forward is through. The only way forward is through. Let's keep going. <laughs> do you need me to call for her? <laughs> no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> Apparently, some sort of game was already being played right off the bat. Scratching at his head with an irritated look on his face, Will glanced around. Pardon me, but what sort of relation did you have with the deceased? <laughs> None at all. It's real pain. Then, why did you come to this funeral? Since Leon was a fairly mild person, Will's behavior was met with nothing more than a blank expression. Is Leon somehow canon, Shannon? Maybe. Somehow? I hope not, because then that makes the relationship with Jessica weird. So I'm hoping that's not the case. It was already weird. I mean, it was it was all, but it's a different kind of weird now. A, a weird I think that, it was already weird. Okay, it's even it's, it's even yeah, weirder, but it was already weird in that way. Yes, it was already weird in that way, but like it it it'd make it weirder on a level where I'd I'd be very like. I, It'd be weirder. A normal person probably would have put on a dubious look long before this. Will scratched his head again and yelled angrily at someone other than Leon. I'm here! Is it about time you showed your face? The members of the Ushiromi family had already followed Krauss's instructions and moved to the waiting room. By now, no one could be seen in this cold, vast chapel decorated by a gold with golden roses, except for Will and Leon. Uh, you take whoever this is, I guess. So you've come. Wizard hunting right? Inquisitor of heresy. The girl's voice came suddenly from behind the pair. Oh, never mind. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> when Leon turned around in surprise, a girl had appeared out of nowhere and drifted down on top of the altar. She landed softly on the sacred funeral altar as though this was perfectly normal, crushing the golden roses under her shoes. Of course, Leon didn't know this girl. Why on earth were all of these people unrelated to the funeral, popping up one after the other? <laughs> I'm already retired. If you have a job you need doing, go ask the new right. <laughs> no, you're the one I want to ask. I'm giving this case to you. Did you read the tale I sent you? <laughs> I skimmed it. 
in like the last five minutes while I was on the plane. <laughs> Just listen, I didn't have time, okay? I don't know who you are, but please get down from there. That's a sacred altar. Snapping out of a daze, Leon told the girl to get down off the altar, but she ignored this completely. On top of that, Will kept on talking to the girl as though Leon wasn't even there. Did Leon... Did Kraus have a child that died before Jessica? No, because they talked for so long about... Wait... They did briefly have a... They did briefly have a baby. You're right. They did very briefly. <laughs> you know, before he was yeeted off a cliff. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, hold on. So that would make Leon the man from 19 years ago. Yep. Cliff's Mickey. Cliff's Mickey, indeed. <laughs> so taking the name Ush... And, and then in that case, if we suspect that the man from 19 years ago is related to Shannon Cannon, then taking on the own moniker... Being, calling himself Leon and taking on the name Usharomi is just being very uh, is, is is him being very um, incendiary on like trying to trying to rile them up. Like, 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 like yeah, oh, look at me. I, yeah, I'm a new Sharomia too. I'm her older. I'm her Jessica's older sister. What about it? I uh, I don't get what you mean. It it makes the naming scheme make a lot more sense all of a sudden. It's not that Kraus had a child before Jessica. Mm -hmm. It's. He was briefly in the role of Krauss's and Jessica, uh, Krauss's and Nazahi's son for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. A very brief amount of time before getting yeeted off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Here, this is Leon. Who is that exactly? You've already heard who. Usharomia Leon. There's no case of a person with that name appearing in any of the previous games. Is this your piece? No. It's a true and proper piece of this game board. A character appearing in the story. <laughs> You're the game master. That means it's your piece. <laughs> I've just moved from Beato's cat box into a larger cat box. Leon is one of the pieces who has a possibility of appearing inside of it. Oh, I see. In other words, it's your piece. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we're just talking past each other at this point. <laughs> it's a piece I've placed would be the correct way to say it. So you're saying this piece isn't your subordinate like Erica? <laughs> Erica? Who's that? <laughs> wow, rude. <laughs> Oh, I think I hear a rat around here. <laughs> Someone should really exterminate that. Ugh. Erica? San? Uh... Don't try to understand, buddy. You just get a headache, all right? <laughs> Leon didn't have a clue what they were talking about. However, though neither person was familiar, it seemed clear that they both knew a lot about the Usharomia family. I... Don't know what you two are talking about. Anyway, you. Girl, please get down off the altar. I ask this as the successor to the Usharomia family headship. Even Leon was finally forced to speak in a raised voice to that girl who continued to chat while casually standing on the altar. However, the girl ignored this completely. On the other hand, Will did show a reaction. The successor is supposed to be Kraus. My father, Kraus, will be the acting head until I turn 20. Then I am to succeed the headship. First time I've heard of this. Can you prove it? It seemed that even Leon was starting to get ticked off by now. And that calm expression appeared to twitch slightly. This is the successor's silver ring of the one-winged eagle. Is that proof enough for you? Oh, Leon solved the epitaph, mm. but isn't an adult yet. Mm. So the headship is being held on to until Leon is an adult. I see. Silver ring. The golden head's ring has appeared several times. I've never heard anything about a silver ring for the successor. I don't remember Cross or Jessica ever wearing one of those. <laughs> I'm glad. For someone who's just skimmed it, it seems you've read it pretty well. 
When a witch hands you a story, you never know when something absurd will pop up. Especially when it's a great witch from the Senate. <laughs> Who in the world are you two? Sorry, but I don't have a clue what you're talking about. If you've finished offering flowers for the departed, please make your exit. It seems you two aren't worthy of our family's hospitality. Leon finally ran out of patience. These were the strictest words that this gentle kid could unleash. However, Will and the girl seemed not to care at all. <clears throat> I didn't come here because I wanted to. We're just wasting time, so let's move onwards. Right? Try and beat this game. As the Game Master, Burncastle, I invite you to join in. Nah, yeah, I refuse. Why? <laughs> I'm retired now. Reasoning and mysteries aren't my business anymore. Well, how do you intend to spend the rest of your life? Is wizard hunting right going to give up witch hunting? <laughs> There's still fox hunting and clam hunting to look forward to. I'm going to go hunt some clams. <laughs> <laughs> They're really finicky bastards. You ever get one quartered? <laughs> They're liable to spook. <laughs> I didn't come here to discuss the rest of my life with you. So, you came here to refuse? <laughs> know that your powers of deduction are truly a sight to behold. <laughs> then do as you will. Go wherever you please. That, that is assuming that you can leave this place. Ugh. So? God, I really am Kirito Sword Art Online. <laughs> I'm a fucking anime protagonist and I can't fucking leave. <laughs> what are the terms and payment? In truth, Will had resigned himself from the beginning. He knew that he was incapable of refusing an invitation from the great Lady Burncastle. Who killed Beatrice? That is my game. In payment, I'll forgive you for your insolence and let you leave this chapel. Oh, really? I heard that boredom hating witches just love being spoken to rudely. That is only for hags who have tired of life after a thousand years. I'm still plenty young, thank you. So I love thinking up horrible fates in which to trap rude men like you. <laughs> that strike a nerve? Uh, <laughs> uh, it was getting at something raw there, buddy. <laughs> so, who's my enemy? There is none. There's no one to stand in your way. I just want to sit back and watch you make your beautiful checkmate in this game. I've even found you an ally. And that's what this Leon is for. Huh? After hearing that name spoken out of the blue, Leon frowned once more. Apparently, they were moving things along without Leon's knowledge or, knowledge or understanding, which the latter seemed to find truly irritating. Nothing personnel, kid. Leon is a member of this Ushuramia family, and should be a, proved to be a useful ally, seeing as no one of the family knows you. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this is all about, but I can hardly be of assistance until I know what's going on here. <laughs> there, see? Without like this, it'll be a piece of cake. Entertain me and my master, wizard hunting right. Ow Ow may be a polite theater goer, but... I might throw popcorn at you if I get bored, okay? I've got a bucket of it right here. Ready? I've got to throw it. It's good. It's gonna ha it, this is happening. You can't <laughs> stop it. Ready? Uh. You're supposed to open your mouth, Will. So I'll <laughs> try it again. Open your mouth and catch it, Will. Dance for me, Will. <laughs> Will scratched at his head with a displeased look on his face. He wasn't at all interested in getting involved, but... By now, he realized that he couldn't disobey Burncastle's orders. Then he approached the casket and pointed at its rose-filled insides. You asked me to solve the case of Branch's murder, but... <laughs> Van Dien's 20 rules, rule number 7. It is forbidden to have a crime without a corpse. That's devil's proof. Maybe it just isn't inside the casket? Unless you can prove that no corpse exists, then this is a mystery. Rule number one, it's forbidden to have a crime without a clues presented. Don't worry, everything is gathered here. Though there was no change to Will's unsatisfied expression, he seemed to have understood the general pattern of this place. The simple fact of a mere, that a mere inquisitor of heresy had been summoned by an uninhibited, fickle, cruel great witch of the Senate 
meant that he'd be treated as no more than a mere underling. All along, he had possessed no way to refuse her. So who killed the owner of this empty coffin? I'll answer that question. However, you let me do things my way. I've got two swords and no patience. <laughs> <laughs> as you like. Vip. You should get yourself a teleportation panel sometime. They're very handy. First off, I need you to understand the current situation, buddy. <laughs> buddy bump cakes, pal. Yes, that would be extremely helpful at the moment. Thanks, chum. So you're going to be the asana to my Kirito. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that, just in like <laughs> deuteragonist way. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> See, you know what it I was. I heard though. what you said. <laughs> but you already understood the reference without me having to explain it. <laughs> I knew you were nerd. <laughs> the Owen's expression seemed nonplussed, angry, and confused all at the same time. <laughs> Over here. Be faster to see it for yourself. Wonderful. Please lead the way. Will signaled with his chin for Leon to follow him and spun around. After snorting once in an unsatisfied manner, Leon followed him as though resigned to see Will's little show. As she watched them leave the chapel, Burncastle sneered silently at them, a cold smile on her face. Is the Miko of the Great Witch of Theater going? Drama and spectating. Featherine something, Aurora. And as the Witch of Miracles, I, Burncastle, announce the start of this game. The tale's title is Requiem of the Golden Witch. Spin a tale fitting for Beato's funeral. <laughs> well now, let's see just how you drag out the guts. She watched until the pair had left the chapel. Burncastle's form evaporated into the empty air just as she arrived. All that remained was her unpleasant cackling. Outside, it was still raining. We haven't seen this before. Have we seen this shot before? I, I feel like so. we saw a shot similar to this in one of the Kuadorian backgrounds. I don't know if it, I don't think it was exactly this, but we saw one that was very similar. <clears throat> when Cannon saw the guest and the successor approaching the reception desk, he bowed deeply. Good work. You can take a break now. So, would you mind leaving? Um. It's Conan. I've worked here for t six, so many years. <laughs> God, as, yes, as you wish. Cannon bowed deeply and then disappeared. Don't you remember the names of all your servants? Our family has many young servants coming in and out, and they're usually replaced quite frequently. Well now, what are you trying to explain to me? Well, you're kind of a dick, you know that? Can't even be bothered to remember <laughs> the names of the people that work for you. Dick move, bro. Who are you, and what business do you have with this family? Of course, there's no need to convince me. Feel free to head on home if you want. <laughs> there is no going home. Not for me, and not for anyone. Could you please give that a rest? Mm, no. Stop speaking in confusing riddles like that all the time. Even I have limits to my patience. If you don't want me to see you off, should I call Genji or Goda? <laughs> don't freak out, all right? But look at this. Yes, I can see that. It's one of the memorial roses. Are you going to show me some kind of magic trick? Will took one of the flower offerings, then showed it to Leon as though pointing out that there were no mechanisms or tricks. Then he slowly lifted it upward. Watch. Yes, I'm watching. Is a dove going to fly out of it? Yep. Or is it going to be flags and fireworks? Huh? Will threw the rose. Anyone would have expected it to fly in an arc and land in some puddle. It didn't, which is why Leon had been struck dumb. Thrown, the rose thrown by Will certainly had flown in an arc. It should have sped on rapidly through the air. However, as soon as it passed out from the shade of the eaves and it was about to reach the rain, it stopped right in midair. 
as though the air surrounding it had turned into syrup. That wasn't all. As it hung in midair, the rose's beautiful golden petals began to darken one after the other, and it became a black husk like burnt charcoal. And this is the Usha, this is the uh, Broken Jima Chapel steps. Mm-hmm. And even after this happened, it remained suspended there in the air. What sort of trick is this? Ah, <laughs> don't move. Leon had moved closer to try and touch the remains of the rose, which still hung in the air. Will had roughly blocked the way with his arm. It was as though he was telling Leon that leaving this place meant certain death. This chapel has been cut off from the fragment. We're currently locked in a concentrated loop of time. What do you mean by that? Time loops, baby. <laughs> you thought we weren't going to have time loops, and now we do. <laughs> Explaining to pains, I'll just give you the short version. Basically, unless we play along with that witch's game, no one can leave this place. What? The funeral is already over. I'm sure some, some people will want to return to the mansion or the guest house. We can't be locked up in here. If you got a bone to pick, that witch is the one you're looking for. Being stuck in a place like this isn't any more pleasant for me. That girl's your friend, right? Make her stop all this weirdness. <laughs> She's probably sitting in a spectator seat with a bucket of popcorn right about now. She won't come if we just call her. What on earth is going on? That short sentence described all of Le Leon's feelings at that moment. However, Leon had seen the rose will through with her in an instant in the rainy darkness. Leon tried doing the same thing with another rose, but the effect was exactly the same. No one would want to use their own body to test this fearsome something that could make roses crumble instantly. There's only one way for us to be released from here. We have to play along with Burn Castle's game. You mean the one about who killed Beatrice? Oh good, you catch on quick. Nice job. That's what she's telling us to investigate. If you can fill me in, this will go more quickly. That fickle witch will be completely satisfied. You'll be able to get rid of the two of us, and I have a date with Deanna when I get back. <laughs> Keep her waiting too long, she'll start tearing up the sofa again. You know how she gets, right? <laughs> who killed Beatrice, you say? That's hardly something you should go barging into a funeral and asking the family about. Questioning the family is one of the basics of the mystery genre. Just give up and accept it, bro. I do know that Beatrice is the mistress of Kinzo, the family head. You really are a strange person. How do you know so much about this family? Are you sure you have no connections with us? Well, I played chap I played EPs 1 through 6. <laughs> Didn't you, dude? Will knew this much about the Usharomia family because Burncastle had shown him all of the fragments so far. Of course, he had no sort of connection with the Usharomia family himself. The very this <laughs> the very plane of it, of his existence was on a different level. However, Beatrice died a long, long time ago. We're in Ganji, she passed away before the mansion was completed. Reason for her death is unclear. To be honest, this is the first I've heard about her. Oh. To be honest, oh, this, this is, is the first I've yeah. heard about her being killed. Tell me about it. Shit. My bad. My name is Usharomia Leon. Willard. Call me Will. Willard. Willard. Willard, right. right. Willard. Willard. Right. Hold on. One sec. Yeah, we're gonna check this this boy out again. And he's quoting Van Dien's rules, not Knox's rules. He's got the he's got the apocrypha bundled in here. <laughs> Van Dien is a pseudonym. Van Dien is a pseudonym. Willard Huntington Wright is the real name of the dude who wrote under the pen name SS Van Dien. Are you fucking kidding so, me? So yeah, he's just quoting his own rules. <laughs> Wasn't that my first guess? Yeah, it was. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Willard, call me Will, buddy. <laughs> For the first time, Will introduced himself. Their mutual introduction was finally complete, and Leon was finally able to talk to him on an even footing. However, Leon took a deep breath and looked up at the sky, wearing a vague smile. Will, son. Call me Will, buddy. <laughs> I'll call you Leon, all right? W Will. Yeah, there you go. To be honest, even I don't know much about this person called Beatrice. I see. Well, I guess it's called a game for a reason, then. If only Leon could have told him everything, revealing the truth without any effort from Will. Apparently, things wouldn't be so easy after all.
Everyone who enters the Usheromia family knows the name and image of Beatrice. It's because of the magic po massive portrait hanging in the entrance hall, isn't it? That portrait was first displayed in April of 1984. Seriously, how is it that you know so much? <laughs> don't worry much about it, Bob. Don't worry about it. <sighs> ah, well. It's about time I stopped finding that odd. I'm sure you'll just start speaking in riddles again. Leon was the successor and lived in the head household. That made conversations with Kinzo an everyday occurrence. Because of this, Leon must have been used to chatting with people who were moody or hard to follow. So, if he's talking with Kinzo, then this is almost assuredly the child Kinzo wanted them to raise. Is the deviation here that Leon came back into their life somehow? I don't know. After getting cliff heated? Had uh, a greater resistance to fall damage this yeah. time around. I'm just going to keep calling him the cliff child. Boots of feather fall. Wait, 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 wait. If Will's going to give Leon a, 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 sh a shortened breakdown of the first couple of what he knows, right? And Leon was tossed off the side of the island as a child. That'd be the cliff's notes. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. Got him! With the understanding that getting stuck on the details would be nothing but a waste of time, the conversation naturally fell into a pattern as though Leon and this unknown man, Will, were longtime friends. <laughs> Buddy cop! <laughs> Everyone knows Beatrice, and yet no one knows her. Kinzo's the only one who's ever met her. The head seems to be particularly cranky today. I'll introduce you to him when the chance presents itself, so I ask that you develop an appropriately discreet attitude, Wilson. That was quick. I thought you'd resist a bit more than that. I'm used to speaking with the family hat. I've learned to accept most unreasonable situations and just go with the flow. Oh, so you already know then. <laughs> About him being dead? <laughs> <laughs> Burncastle had set up a barrier, cutting off the chapel from the rest of the world. To destroy that, they would have to find out who killed Beatrice. For Leon, who had already experienced many of Kinzo's rantings, understanding this much was more than enough. Every time some weird guy just shows up and demands insane things, I just kind of roll with it now. Fair that's enough. That's healthy, right? Yeah, you know what? I think that's... No. No, that's not, my dude. Okay, then... Leave? Mm, nah. <laughs> it's been long enough. I'm kind of invested at this point. You know, <laughs> some cost fallacy and all that. <laughs> oh, man. Let's take a moment here and look at the tips. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I want to know what's up in the fucking tips. This God, time. all of the new and all of the new um images and stuff for this chapter, are so cool. Mm. Um, system, right? Yeah, here we go. Hello. All right, here we go. Um, that's the same. Yeah, but he's. But we don't have. We're not starting with the premise that he's dead. Yeah, but it's the same as what we were originally presented before we had that premise revealed to us. True. And interestingly, Leon is an offshoot of Kinzo and not Kraus, mm. which again would work with with the the idea that. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that does work with the idea that Leon is the man from 19 years ago. Usharomia Leon. I'm Ushromia Leon. I'm the first child of Kraus and Natsuhi. Jessica is their second child. I was given the silver ring of the successor to the headship, and I'll succeed the position of family head upon turning 20. I'm mild, polite, without any clear faults. Except for being too young, I'm a more suitable successor than anyone else, and I'm adored by Kinzo. Yeah, that's also, gotta be it. Also, look at my boots. Your boots are my boots and shorts combo is kind of... Kind of... Are those even shorts, or are they just, They're just long pants that are very tucked in? Why like that? Yeah, it's unclear. Also, got the same kind of maroon color. <laughs> Kinzo picked my wardrobe. That There's... shouldn't have happened. <laughs> but now, I can't, I don't know how to say no to him, so it's like been too I long. I want to see, we haven't seen new art, Leon. Yeah, we did, very briefly. Wait, we did? Mm-hmm. Can we again? We can <laughs> see it in there, in there, on the same screen. <laughs> so, sorry, I had to, I had to... Sneeze real quick. Um, to new, right? Hello. Yeah, we, we saw Leon briefly. I wasn't paying attention then. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, Kraus and Natsuhi's second, second child. So this is new. I'm Kraus and Natsuhi's second child. 
Leon was chosen as the successor to the headship, so I dream of pushing the family responsibilities onto Leon and leaving for the city myself. Apparently, even with the massive change to my environment, which was brought about by not being an only child, hasn't changed my personality. Well, that's good. We wouldn't want to have to write a completely different character for this part here. Hmm. That's the same. Not the same. I'm only going to check, like, a couple of these ones, just, you know, the ones that are... Yeah, okay. What about Battler? He's not here. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, it's true. He's not here. However, it seems he is not participating in this year's family conference. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Wait. He has now returned to the usual Roman family after six years. However, it seems he's not participating in the conference. So what does that mean for him to return to the family but not be participating in the conference? Pretty weird. Uh, what about Shannon and Cannon? Anything up with them? Normal. Yep. Pseudonym. Yep. Normal. Normal. Yep. Normal. Normal. Right. Yeah, this is all huh. the same. Let's check out. That's new. Yep. I'm Burn Castle. I'm the Witch of Theater. I'm the Witch of Miracles and the Miko to the Witch of Theater going. In the seventh game, I conduct Beato's funeral. I was defeated in the previous game, making me the loser. Proclaim that I will tear out the guts of Beato's game to satisfy my irritation. And yet. Yo, I'm killer. I'm killer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Willard H. Wright. <gasps> Member of the SSVD, the 8th District Repentance Enforcement Agency of the Great Court of Heaven. <laughs> An Inquisitor of Heresy and a First Class Archbishop. I'm commonly known as Wright of the Twenty Wedges or Wizard Hunting Wright. I was an ace hunter of heresy in my youth, feared for being both ruthless and merciless in my work. However, at some point, there was a change in my work attitude, and my previous flashy escapades became a thing of the past. My current style is often fickle, alternating between laziness and obsessive bursts of energy regarding mere trifles. By now, anyone has given up on trying to understand me. I've been ex I have already filed my resignation and had it accepted. Only a few days remain before I'll lose the name of right. It's only I, two weeks to go scarf. until retire. Yeah, his scarf that just... What the fuck is... I've only got two weeks till retirement, though, so I guess the buddy <laughs> cop thing really is kind of uh, apt, huh? <laughs> About Maria. A little magician who was in... Oh. I'm a little magician who inherited black blood from Kinzo. When a Kinzo, I was gifted with talent and began to tread the path of magician from a young age. However, my power is still weak, and I haven't yet graduated from an apprentice level. However, I'm skilled with enchantments, which bestow magical power upon objects. The magical items that create our all master. Oh, no, that so is that's the, the same. That is the same. That last turn of phrase, the all master class thing, is. Yep, and this is the same. Yeah. Black tea and ice cream. Virgilia, Runaway, The Gap. I think her tiny little hat. <laughs> <laughs> the Seven Sisters of Purgatory. Yep. Yep. E okay. Interesting. Huh. All right. Well. Huh. Huh, indeed. <laughs> Am I right? Uh, curious how this all fits together. Me too. I've been looking into those lion eyes. <laughs> 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 wow. So I think I think the operating theory we have now is that Leon Oh, so Leon represents the man from 10 years ago. 19 years ago, right? The man from 19 years ago. Which makes sense with all the stuff about not yet 20. Yep. Because 19. Right. And vital and I think I think much in the same way that the previous two game boards represented possible worlds. Possible worlds where Erica had washed up on the shore rather than dying in the typhoon out at sea. These represent possible futures where Leon uh, specked in fall damage reduction. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or Leon was actually raised as an Usharomia. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I still I still think our operating theory is that Leon I is the person who would become Shannon in canon later on. Yeah. Um. But we'll, you know, we'll have to see what the actual shape of this game board looks like once we get on it. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working with right now. Um, and I, it'd be interesting to see how that changes things. 
It sure will. Yeah. Anyway. I just remembered I also have to, like, press buttons to play this game. Yeah. Which, honestly, homophobia. <laughs> I mean, it probably has auto-read. Yeah, but <laughs> it'll auto-read too quickly for us to read along with it. And what yeah. if I want to not go along because I want to, like, do some ad-libbing? People <laughs> love our ad-libbing, right? They do. I hope. If they didn't, then it's that's unfortunate they... for them that they're here on Chapter 7 still. Right? I mean, that's why they come to our channel. Two queers sit adjacent to a game and talk about it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the Usharomia family members were relaxing here and there around the waiting room. A light buffet-style meal had been set up, but it was a bit stale and not particularly appealing. Even so, those voracious kids seemed to find it intensely interesting. The cousins had set up camp around it with Maria at the center. The adult siblings had also formed a group in a different corner. Perhaps because of Kinzo's absence, everyone seemed to be a little more relaxed. Leon, where did you go? And who is that? Did you find a new boyfriend? <laughs> Flattered, but no. <laughs> Sorry, I don't rob the cradle, ma'am. <laughs> Mother, I was entertaining this guest of ours. Will, this is my mother, Natsuhi. <laughs> no introductions needed. Just tell me what you have to say. Huh? Did you say something? <laughs> no, he said nothing. This is Will's son. It seems he knew the deceased. With a smile, Leon casually smoothed over with Will's words. He wants to know more about Beatrice. Do you know anything about her mother? Well, let's think about it. The reason Natsuhi started having these dissociative episodes featuring Beatrice, right, was because of the guilt she felt around and the weight she felt around propping up the family after eating Leon off a cliff. That's true. But also, in this route, Beatrice is something that is like to the point where they're having this funeral thing for Beatrice. Yeah. And Kinzo's around. So I feel like now I he, feel like a lot of things are different. The portrait still got put up, which is interesting, because yeah. I assumed the portrait was the doing of the KD of the KDA. So here's my call. The funeral is because the epitaph got solved. Leon here's got the ring, so Leon solved the epitaph. And that puts the witch to sleep for all time. There you go. And that's why the funeral. I mean, that is in, that is in the epitaph, right? Yeah. Makes sense. I don't it know why the epitaph why... got put up anyway, it also, but... Yeah. And it also explains, like, why Leon is set to take on the headship right now. Yeah. Which is what we thought last time. That's what we said last episode, that Leon had solved it. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes sense, the putting to sleep. It explains the funeral, which I hadn't thought of last time. Leon, the departed is an individual to whom the head owed a great debt. Nothing more, nothing less. This funeral is a ceremony for the head to repay his benefactor for all he received while that person still lived. That is what I have been told, and there is nothing more to it than that. Thanks, Mother. Will, that's all my mother knows. Not so he was eager to deny the scandal about Beatrice being Kinzo's mistress. However, she had also had enough sense to realize that this scandal was probably true. Picking up that Natsuhi he was in a bad mood and didn't want to talk about this anymore. Leon brought an end to that conversation before Will could say something rude again. <laughs> what? <laughs> it looks like you're ramping up to say something, so... <laughs> Will is like the one Usharomia who specked into being good at social skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow. Good job, Leon. Will, this chapel belongs to the family. So you're telling me to follow the family's rules then? Speak in a manner appropriate for a guest of the family. Wait, question. If this is an open funeral and this chapel's on an island, is there just like an open ferry today or what? Yeah, it's pretty unclear actually. Yeah, I've just, I've just been thinking about that. Anyway. Let me be the medium for all of your conversations. I ask that you follow those two rules. Oh, I'll work on that. <laughs> yes, this burn castle witch or whatever has dragged us into is a real pain. I'm just rolling with this. Because of that, I'm willing to help you. 
but we're equal partners in this job, and you'd best not forget that. All right, I mean, whatever, man. And here I thought you were just some well-bred rich boy. <laughs> Seems you could speak up a little after all. <laughs> Bump this. Bros? <laughs> Bros? Yeah, come on, buddy. It's the only way we're getting through this together. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, bro, 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 Lee bro, <laughs> bro, yo, no, oh, hold on, man, it'll, it'll come to me, all right, all right. <laughs> I must be prepared to shoulder the Ushiromiya family's future, after all. I've noticed the one difference in um in Will's necklace is that instead of just like the two keys crossed, the bot, the vertical key has been kind of bent to make it look like an anchor. Yeah, it looks like an anchor or a puzzle piece or something. But like clearly the cross of the anchor still shows the same design as um that was on um <sighs> That was on the the armbands of Visor and Youngfrau. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember names. <laughs> Got it. Well, let's solve this crime together, Watson. I'm glad I can help. I wouldn't want to keep your dear cat Diana waiting. Won't she need to be fed soon? I gave her extra food today, so she should be good for a while. But thank you. I appreciate it. I'm surprised you realized Diana was a cat. I figured it'd be just a bit too eccentric for her to be a human woman who scratches at sofas when you keep her waiting. <laughs> well, fair enough. So? I mean, unless they're into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Who will you talk to first? Literally anyone. Any, everyone. Uh, let's start with those ones over there. They're crass as siblings, right? From right to left, there's Aunt Eva, Uncle Hideyoshi. Over there is Uncle Rudolph, Aunt Kyrie. And over there is... Ushiromiya Rosa. When she was a girl, she once got lost in the forest and bumped into a woman calling herself Beatrice in a hidden mansion. I know I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but you really do know everything, don't you? I know a lot of things, my dude. <laughs> so you know about that story, too. That's interesting. Because that means that that's common knowledge. The characters in this setting. Oh. Does it? Well, I mean, Leon is familiar with that, and that was something Rosa had kept to her in, in other game boards, had kept to herself up until that very day, and was only coerced to sharing it under very specific circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, the fact that Leon knows about it is... is... It's worth, it's worth looking into why that is. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, well. Why don't you read Leon's line? I managed to overhear her saying that today. It looked as though it was bothering her, so I pretended not to hear. <laughs> Real model student you are. Introduce me, would you? I want to ask about it. You're asking this of the model student who pretended not to hear because it just might be a painful topic? Even this outrageous arrogance is nothing compared to Kinzo. After muttering this several times mentally, Leon shrugged and nodded at Will. Oh, it's our successor, Sama. And who is this? Oh, Aunt Ava. This is Will-san. He came to offer flowers for the departed. But who cares about that, am I right? <laughs> Tell me everything. Ow! Fuck! Not... Oh, God! <laughs> fuck, I got a bad toe, man. <laughs> you didn't have to do me dirty like that, dude. Oh! Can I need, like... Oh! Can I get, like, an ice pack? <laughs> and I know you don't have like a crutch or something here, but like, can I get like a, can I borrow a cane? <laughs> Just break off a table leg, something. Ah! <laughs> he says he wants to know what sort of relationship the Ushiromiya family has had with the deceased. Leon spoke with a bright smile after pinching Will's butt. <laughs> I see. Will silently protested as though saying, I saw that coming, but damn, that hurt. But Leon just played dumb and smiled at Ava like a model student. Well, even if you say relationship with the Ushiromiya family. It probably makes more sense to say her relationship with father. <laughs> no need to beat around the bush. She was father's mistress, after all. If you call her that, Natsuhine-san will yell at you again. He is, uh, indebted to her, right? <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> Wee -hee -hee. Well, there you have it. I have no interest in anyone but Rosa, man. Uh, why? <laughs> you already... Uh, uh, I don't think that's going to set right, man. I need to... Uh. <laughs> I do believe that you said you met with Beatrice, Aunt Rosa. 
<clears throat> this whole time, Rosa had been hanging her head. Leon's words made her shoulders quiver. She just suddenly came out with it today. It's a bit hard to believe, but... It's the truth. I killed Beatrice. <laughs> Perfect. My work here's finished. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> that was... Dude, do you know what sarcasm is yet? Or are you that isolated? <laughs> God, go on the internet or something. <laughs> they haven't invented it yet. Yeah, they have. And this... Yeah, the, the original... Like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Just, I don't think Leon's had access to it, but it's the, like the beginnings of the internet are definitely kicking around by now. <laughs> Rosa broke down crying and laid her head on the table. Kyrie and Hideyoshi tried to console her. Rokinjima is covered by a dense forest. We only know about one tiny portion of it. Just the mansion, the rose garden, and the little path that leads to the harbor. For years there's been stories about how Dad built a hidden mansion somewhere in the vast forest forest that no one knew about. And he had a mistress living there. Rosa Sam probably stumbled on the hidden mansion by chance. That's what we figured. However, what does this have to do with Aunt Rosa killing Beatrice? If I hadn't taken her out with me, she never would have died. She was so innocent, like a chick. I took her out and she just followed along obediently. She stayed right behind me, trusting me completely. And because I made her take such a dangerous path... So, has no one put together that this can't possibly be the same mistress, Beatrice that is Kinzo's mistress? Like, just... Age. Huh? Did you make her walk that way because you were hoping she'd slip and fall from the cliff? I never meant to do that. I just thought she'd like to see the ocean. No, it just looked like the path would be hard to walk, and I thought it would be easier going if we went down the cliff first. Uh, well, lucky for you, that's not what it means to kill someone. It was an accident, so, uh... An accident she never would have had if I hadn't brought her with me, right? It's my fault. And then I abandoned her when she was covered in blood and ran home. Listen... I know you have no idea what this phrase is about, what I've got to say means, but uh, if you try to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it just, it's, it's as though you didn't finish that sentence. I uh, heard, okay, have you I tried? See. And then there was just a buzzing static. <laughs> I see what's going on here. All right. No, no, don't worry about it. Just feel free to stew. <laughs> it isn't your fault. Beatrice had never seen the ocean before. You showed her that for the first time ever, and she was probably so excited that she just happened to take a bad step. How can you know that? Beatrice might thank you for what you did, but, uh, <laughs> she would never hate you. Really? Is that really true? She's the one who begged to see the world outside the fence, right? <laughs> that was only for a short while he made that dream of hers come true. If I were Beatrice, I'd thank you for that short bit of time. If she knew that you'd been suffering all this time for it, she'd probably feel sorry for you. Beatrice is grateful for what you did. You're the one who taught her that the sea is blue, after all. Is that true? <laughs> I guarantee it. It's as red as this one little streak I put in my hair. You <laughs> like it? All the scene kids are doing it these days. You look well, like Shadow the Hedgehog. How do you... <laughs> I found Did you, you come here for our chaos Baker? emeralds? <laughs> how do you know what that is? <laughs> is that part of the alternate history on this island too? <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog got invented in 1980 something. <laughs> Will made that statement statement openly and boldly. It wasn't clear how Rosa took those words. <laughs> However, it had apparently been enough to remind Rosa to take a handkerchief out of her pocket and wipe her eyes with it. Thank you. No problem. I'm just handing out closure like potato chips today. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got some deep-seated trauma they need help moving off from? I'm in a good mood, all right? <laughs> those are the words Beatrice has whispered to you even now. Thank you. Rosa wiped her eyes with the handkerchief one more time and hung her head. 
It no longer looked like a fit of sobbing, but more as though she was speaking with the Beatrice of that day within her heart. One last time. You really have no problem making claims you could never back up, don't you? <laughs> back up? <laughs> Is that really necessary to comfort a woman? It seems I underestimated you. It's also literally true, so I mean like... <laughs> little column A, little column B. <laughs> How many years did it torment Rosa? And now, finally, she would probably be able to face that innocently smiling Beatrice, who had seen the ocean for the first time in her life. She was the only one who would forgive, who could forgive Rosa. And now the two of them could finally speak together. I don't know who you are, but... <laughs> yeah, a lot of that going around. Thank you. I wonder if she'll forgive me. I've worried a lot about it for nearly 20 years. <laughs> That's far too long. She'll tell you that you suffered more than enough already. That's right, Aunt Rosa. The sadder you are, the sadder Beatrice would be. Well, actually. <laughs> you too. Thank you. I don't know if I'll be forgiven, but I'll keep on speaking to my heart to see whether she'll forgive me or not. Thanks, you two. Sorry for showing you such an embarrassing side of me. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this right after saying something so pretty, but I want you to talk to me. And tell me what happened back then. Wilson... Thanks, but it's fine. Yeah, that's me. What's up, Leon? <laughs> something on your mind? <laughs> Need my attention? <laughs> no, we all good here? All right, all right, buddy. <laughs> I'll talk. Hiding this and keeping quiet about it for so long might have been my greatest sin. Exactly when was it that you met Beatrice? Upon hearing this question, Rosa closed her eyes lightly, reaching back to a past that she didn't want to remember. It was about 20 years ago. 20 or, wait, it might have been 19 or 18 years ago. We suspect this is just, this would have been just before Kinzo tried to get Natsuhi to raise one of the children. Yep. Because, and, and presumably the baby is hers. Yep. Because presumably she goes out and accidentally yeets or gets yeeted off a cliff and then... Who we're, who we're hard assuming is Tiny Leon is given to Natsuhi. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I've tried to force myself to forget it for so long that I've nearly forgotten that part completely. It should have been uh, 1967. Does that sound right? Runaway had guaranteed that with the Red Truth in the third game. That's right. It was probably about 1967. I can remember what happened as clearly as a picture. I'll never forget. If it's tough for you, don't feel like you have to tell us. But actually you do, so please, please keep, please uh, power through. <laughs> I can get you like, I don't know, like maybe an energy drink if you need it. <laughs> 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 you ever try giving Red a, Bull? <laughs> giving a fucking monster energy to a grieving, miserable person being like, here, this will make you feel better. Well. <laughs> Don't worry. The first couple of minutes are going to suck, but it'll be easier after that. <laughs> yeah. Clear as a picture, if you don't mind. Ah! I'm. If you do that on my other foot, I'm not going to be able to walk. <laughs> do you want to be stuck here with me? <laughs> ah, that hurts, Leon. Ah! What does... I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my god, I hate you. At the time, I was in a state of shock since my tutor told mother about something that was supposed to be a secret. Since my tutor told mother about something that was... Interesting. This this is some of the stuff that came up that that was Rosa alluded to in that scene. I am not very uh, short up on, on what she... On what, uh, the what she was thinking about in the beginning of that scene yet. Yeah. So. On that day, I became reckless and I kept on running deeper and deeper into the forest. This tale had also been told in a previous fragment. Back when Rosa was just a kid, she went deep into the forest, found a hidden mansion, and met with a mysterious woman who called herself Beatrice. What's up? 
Not much. But that forest is so thick, even pushing your way through a bit of it is hard, right? <laughs> Got him. Yeah, you know what's up, bud. <laughs> I even surprised myself to think that I made it so far into such a dense forest. I was tormented by twigs and sharp leaves over and over again. However, that wasn't enough to bother me on that day. After all, I wanted to disappear into the forest and vanish forever. If by some chance there really was a witch's mansion in the depths of the forest, I hoped that she might take me to some paradise or else turn me into a frog and make me a resident of the forest. So then you reached the hidden mansion, Kuwadorian, and uh, met a woman who called herself Beatrice, is that right? Yes, I met her. Was that Beatrice the same as the one in the portrait? Uh, yes. Great question, right? They were the same person. Beautiful blue eyes, golden hair, a black dress. It truly was the person in that portrait. When father first had it hung, I realized that the 20 years I'd spent trying to forget must have seemed just as long to father, if not even longer. And I became even more fearful of my sin. That's interesting. If it is explicitly a portrait of the second Beatrice, the younger one, then what hap- what- what- it, then it's- Kinzo is no longer obsessed with the original Beatrice. I sh- I don't know. I don't know what we take from that. Yeah, I don't- I don't know. Hmm. I think- I think it's perfectly reasonable that by that time we think Kinzo is quite- uh, True. Quite detached from- Plus, she doesn't look nearly anyway. Italian enough. <laughs> Stop there. Are we sure that this is the same Beatrice that Rosa San met? See, 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 game's getting to it. Game's getting to it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately, Kiri, I spoke the question that Will had been thinking of. It would be too rash to assume that the Beatrice Kinzo met and the one Rosa met were the same person. The time and generation didn't match up. Hey. Beatrice is supposed to be that lady of leisure who lent down all that gold shortly after the war, right? By using Beatrice's gold as a foundation, father revived the Usharomia family and got super rich. Then he bought Rokinjima and moved over. Rosa San meeting her must have been at least ten years after that. At least ten. At least ten. But the Beatrice Rosa met was was implied to be like a Mid late teenager, right? Mm-hmm. Someone, I think around sixteen was. I don't know that we know that level of d- that level of de- detail. Hmm. Um, but it would be strange if she was much younger than that to use the same adult Beatrice portrait. Sure would. Um, the at least ten years is interesting because it would seem like it's got to be a lot more than at least, right? Right. Let's, Sixty-seven. Let's see if he clarifies that or not. A woman who could do as she pleased with ten tons of gold could hardly be some little girl. And ten more years passed before she met Rosa. Rosa? How old did the Beatrice you met look? She looked older than I was at the time, but even so, it looked as though she might just be reaching adulthood. Okay, so mathing that out, right? I don't think we ever put this together with the math of when Kinzo met the original Beatrice. So, that means this Beatrice was alive during that period. Hmm. Does it? If they're, if they're, unless their 10 year estimate is, well, it has to be low. It yeah, because that's it, exactly what I was thinking. There would be no yeah. way that it could be at least, uh, that it could be just 10 years, unless Assuming... it was the Korean War, maybe. But when did the Korean War end? Plus, yeah. the Korean War wouldn't make sense because they were talking about the occupying powers, which and it would it imply it that, World War II. And it would imply that Beatrice hadn't lived her entire life in Kuwadorian, mm-hmm. which is what we're hard assuming. Yeah. Did she look middle-aged or past her prime? If I had to call her an adult or a child, she was clearly closer to being a child. There's no way she was middle-aged. And isn't that strange? We have the Beatrice you met and the Beatrice who gave father the gold, but their ages don't match at all. (laughs) In other words, they're different people, right? 
different people who look very similar and have the same name. Yeah, I know. It's fucked up. Don't think too much about it. Gee, I'm sure glad there's nobody else here with beautiful long golden locks who could potentially be confused for Beatrice. Nah, don't worry. It's, you actually don't have golden hair, dude. It's, a, it's an abstraction. <laughs> it's like the Matrix, you know? <laughs> the idealized self-image and all that. Oh, God. <laughs> that hasn't come out yet. No, but you've seen it, right? <laughs> It might have been her daughter. A kid would obviously end up looking like her mother. Okay, so yeah, that's what we've been assuming so far. Yeah. His mistress's daughter. It is possible. Perhaps father had an illegitimate child with the Beatrice who gave him the gold. Huh. <laughs> and then Rosa bumped into Beatrice the second, huh? That way the ages fit just fine. <laughs> I see. In other words, there are two people who can be called Beatrice. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Strap in, my dude. <laughs> Kinzo secretly raised his mistress's child in a hidden mansion. It made sense. Everyone nodded, agreeing. However, Will's expression was slightly unsatisfied, and he scratched at his head. So, it would seem that this funeral exists for the two Beatrices he couldn't mourn, because they were kept secret. Rosa, you probably don't want to remember, but tell me about that accident, all right? To Beatrice Vell, was she still breathing? No, her eyes were open wide. She fell upside down, head first, and knocked her head against a sharp crag on the rocky beach. And she fell from such a height. Her skull had split and caved inwards. That beautiful golden hair was stained red with blood almost instantly. Was it the sort of wound that clearly showed that she was dead? Yes. I saw the insides of her cracked head. It had caved in deep enough to fit your fist inside it. No one could be naive enough to see that and still hope that she was alive. And that's what we had assumed, too. Will, do you really need to ask anything more? And <laughs> That's enough for the time of the accident. <laughs> what did you do afterwards, though? I dashed away at full speed. I can't say I was thinking about calling for help. I wanted to escape from that place as fast as I could. Half crazed, sobbing and out of breath, I kept on running about at random. Eventually I came across a familiar lion statue. Uh, actually it's Leon. <laughs> Common misconception. Uh, you should, if you read the previous chapter, you, uh, don't worry, that one's free. Oh, you mean the one in front of the chapel? N no, the one behind it. The one behind it? Okay. There's Any a lion statue behind? Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, I made it back to the mansion. I couldn't tell anyone, and I didn't want to. I stayed quiet until nightfall. It was so horrible of me. If I had hurried and told someone... They might have brought her a first aid kit, and she might have been saved. That was the first aid going to help with a crushed cranium. You didn't kill her. Don't worry about that anymore. Hmm. Here, allow me to soothe you with my soothing arm belts. And <laughs> look, look at all my unnecessary. I got a belt on my arm. I got a belt on my waist. I got a belt across my shoulder. <laughs> Tell me, are you not soothed? <laughs> Are you not secure? <laughs> then what did you do next? That night, I turned over in my bed so many times, I couldn't sleep. Late that night, I quietly called Genji-san on the phone and told him. Interesting. Okay. Genji's always known. That's cool. Well, of course. Yeah. Well, I mean... He obviously found out at some point because he got really pissed and he got not pissed, but he was unusually unnaturally pissy with the uh, the the ferryman. Mm. Right. And telling him no longer to come to the hidden side. Yeah. What do you say? He told me to let him handle everything and to speak of this to no one. I spent the next several days terrified that father would call for me and scold me brutally, but he didn't. Genji-san kept on doing his job quietly, just like normal. Father stayed locked up in his study, not knowing any of it. At the very least, none of us had ever heard about it. Eh, 
Can't you say probably managed to clean everything up nicely, huh? After all, they couldn't have let knowledge of that child go public. Hmm. Even if she was an illegitimate child, she was still his daughter by blood. It must have been tough for father not being able to hold a real funeral for her. I suppose that's why we're having this funeral. <laughs> well, and then? That's all I know. And that's all I know, too. I'm not hiding anything else. I've told you everything. I swear it. Hmm. Will scratched at his head, letting his gaze wander. It had taken Rosa a lot of determination to make this confession, but it was nothing particularly special for Will. Right, because this is all stuff that we... Maybe the fact that she phoned Genji, but that might have been something that would have been clear when we had rewatched the scene, and that might have just been a detail that slipped our notice, but... Hmm. We did know Genji had been, like, a cleaner for it, mm -hmm. so. It had apparently been little more than a review of information he had already knew. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Aunt Rosa. Is that enough for you, Will? Are you satisfied? That's enough. It was a nice review. To Will, Rosa's memories gave only information that was already known. This was the first time he had heard all that about her running back to the mansion after Beatrice fell to her death, but none of it was particularly surprising. Apparently, Rosa didn't know any more than this. If he wanted to learn more that was in the fragments Burncastle gave him, he would need to find new testimony. Hey, Leon! Tell Kinzo I want to talk to him. Looks like we won't get anywhere without asking the man himself. Where are you going? I have to cool my head and organize my thoughts. Don't follow, all right? Well then, pardon me. Please take your time. All right, I will. Thanks, bro. I knew you'd understand. <laughs> after giving an elegant bow, Leon made a face tongue sticking out. Mm. Unless Will had eyes on the back of his head, he couldn't have seen this last bit. Too bad for you I can read the, no the, the uh, non jetic text. <laughs> <laughs> Will returned to the chapel by himself. The cold air and the monotonous sound of the rain were comforting. So, how's the game going? And he had come here for a little peace and quiet. As soon as he let out a sigh of relief, the voice rang out. That's my line. It was as though she had been sitting there all along. Burncastle appeared on top of the altar once more. Beatrice's altar must have been extremely comfortable. <laughs> Is it actually comfortable or are you just doing it out of spite? Mm, little column A, little column B. <laughs> Battler annoyed me over and over with his incompetence. You're quite competent compared to him, so it's much more relaxing to watch you work. <laughs> Unlike Yoshi Romeo Battlers games, I have nothing standing in my way. It's easy. That sort of game has already ended. Tales can be enjoyed twice, you know. You're allowed <laughs> to go back and reread them. I can't believe they put in they put in a foreshadowing for the sequel, Umineko 2, where you read Umineko again. <laughs> First you love them, and then you tear out their guts. <laughs> so I'm Butcher now, huh? So? Do you think you figured out who killed Beatrice? Well, the confession is something I've already known from a previous fragment. There was no brand new information. We're still at square one. <laughs> Unless Ushiromi Kinzo tells us what really happened, we won't get any further than this. Don't tell me that arguing with Kinzo and persuading him to spill the beans is supposed to be part of this game. Well, that would be fatally boring. Kinzo refuses to speak of the truth and is himself the king protected by his castle. But I wouldn't have any fun to have that stand in the way of your game, so... I won't torture. It's not my style. I know. As the game master, I will grant you power. Then you can get the truth from Kinzo, of course. Still wearing shoes, Burncastle stepped into the casket, picked up one of the flowers that had been set as offerings, and blew hard as though scattering fluff from a dandelion. Then a single petal broke off and drifted down towards Will, no longer gold but with the shine of a transparent crystal. Detective's authority, huh? Huh, <laughs> what, that pathetic ability? No, this is an invitation to the grandstand. Theater-going authority? <laughs> That's supposed to be forbidden without authorization from the Senate. You know how hard it is to get anything done there without breaking the filibuster. 
<laughs> the witch filibusters must be horrible. Oh God, right? Cause they just they just loop recursively, throwing each other into endless series of awful fragments for like ten thousand years until nobody remembers what the bill was that they were debating. Hey, 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 hey! Say what you want, will about the witch senate. At least they at least they all have witch health care. <laughs> I'm the one giving it on my game board. Who's gonna stop me, huh? <laughs> all right. Though the crystal flower petal danced in the wind. It wouldn't fly away until Will accepted it. He remembered how useless it was to argue with witches and snatched it up. When he did, the petal flashed brightly for an instant, melted into Will's palm, and then disappeared. <laughs> Entertain me if you can. And try to enjoy yourself, okay? You must also be interested in seeing what the guts of Beatrice's game board looked like, right? No, not really. <laughs> After Will's rude answer, Burncastle vanished into thin air, leaving behind an obnoxious laugh. Ugh. After clicking his tongue, Will turned around unhappily. When he did, it felt as though his gaze had crossed that of a shadow standing right in front of him, near the door that led outside. No, who is it? Uh, pardon me. I heard a voice, so I wondered who it was. Oh, Shannon, what's up? <laughs> so you're running the reception desk this time? Yes. I've been taking it in turns with Cannon Coon to run the reception desk. And Cannon? A short while ago, he was ordered by, uh, Leon Sama to take a break, so he's resting now. So you don't know Leon either? Huh? No, that's not... Yeah, right? I mean, here's the, here's the thing where they're... Ushiromi, Ushiromi Leon is the successor, the one who wears the silver ring. Why are you stumbling over that name when you've worked here for ten years, huh? That's... Don't worry. <laughs> I don't recognize Leon either. Krauss is supposed to be the successor. Jessica is supposed to be his only child. There hasn't been a single fragment with anyone named Leon in the Ushiromi family. When she realized that Will didn't recognize Leon either, Shannon relaxed. Apparently she was a bit relieved to find that she wasn't going crazy by herself. However, her expression grew quickly, quickly grew uncertain once more. Where is this place? I think it's the Ushiromiya family chapel. However, something feels different about it. Also, I never knew that someone named Leon Sama existed. And yet, Madam Kraus Sama, the master, Milady, and all the relatives all talk as though it's perfectly natural. I just don't understand what's happening because necessarily shannon and canon can't exist in a world with leon in it yep oh huh. leon is a piece placed by burn castle she also said that in order to place that piece she switched over to a larger cat box see the need and like that's even making explicit that the game board no longer covers just those two days which mm -hmm. allowed erica to you know still be on because the boat could have crashed that in that particular way on those days. In order to make this happen, we have to go way, way back. Mm hmm Nearly two decades. On top of that, it seems this world isn't a proper world, but one made out of several different fragments sewn together. It's as though this is a special stage set up specifically for this game. I'm sure she's nodding at my thoughts right now, laughing and chomping down popcorn. Hey, how long you worked here in this world, huh? Ten years. I see. So it really is a special stage, huh? Draw right when I entered the chapel, I spotted Kinzo. Since Shannon has been working here ten years, this world place takes place in 1986, the stage of Beatoski. In that case, Kinzo shouldn't exist. However, he definitely was here just a few minutes ago, so, uh... Burncastle promised that all of the information needed for reasoning was gathered here. She must have really packed it together to fit everything in. <laughs> I see, so it really is a special stage, huh? You served the Ushiromi family for many years, uh, so just how much do you know about Beatrice, huh? I know the Master loved her deeply, but other than that... Is that all? And, um, they say that she's the Master of Rokunjima's Night. Um... Well, that's right. The name of the ghost rumored to wander the mansion night after night is also Beatrice, huh? That brings the number of Beatrices, 
Beatrices, if you will, to three. The first is the Beatrice from more than 30 years ago who was said to have given Kinzo the gold. The second is the Beatrice from 20 years ago who met Rosa. And the third is the Beatrice of the ghost stories who is rumored to be the master of the night on Rokunjima. Interesting, so they make it explicit that programmer Beatrice represents the Beatrice of the night. Hmm. Erica's reasoning was probably correct here. It started out as a legend of evil spirits in Rokunjima, and later on elements such as Kinzo's occult hobbies, naming the portrait of the mysterious woman Beatrice, and the epitaph all got mixed in, and it was all integrated into the legend of the Golden Witch. Then the darkness of the night gained the personality of a witch, that's third Beatrice. This became the veil for the serial murders. Uh, Do you want some cereal? I can some checks mix right now. <laughs> Apparently she didn't understand a word of Will's sudden monologue. Shannon tried to follow along, but she seemed to be having difficulty. Don't waste your time trying to understand it, alright? You'll just get a headache. M my apologies. <laughs> Don't worry. You want a Red Bull? <laughs> I just got like a case of them with me. I'm giving them out. It's like... <laughs> I can't do anything else to help people, so maybe I can make things a little weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Cannon doesn't know Leon either, right? Yes, Cannon Coon was the same as me. Shannon and Cannon, is it? Call Cannon over here. I want to talk to the pair of you about something. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! When Will said these words, Shannon's face went blank and her eyes went wide. My apologies, we aren't allowed to leave the reception desk unmanned, so I can't leave to go get him. Then find a replacement and have them take over the reception desk until you get back. You, me, Cannon. We, the three people who don't know Leon, need to talk. Hmm. We've been told that one person is enough to run the reception desk. But no one told you there was anything wrong with two people manning it, right? We're low on helpers today, so we were told that having two people at the reception desk would be unnecessary. Who gave you that order? Kinzo, Kraus, or was it Leon? I'll check with them. It was the one who orders me. I cannot disobey orders. Hors d'oeuvres? <laughs> Where? Wait, who is this person? I'll negotiate with them instead. You cannot negotiate. It is the one who orders us. Call Cannon over here. I hate theater going just as much as I hate torture. Slowly, Will pulled his right hand out of his pocket. When he slowly opened his fist, a small bright glow emanated from it. The flower petal given to him by Burncastle had become a glowing, sparkling mark on his hand. He held that hand out towards Shannon and slowly approached her. Call Cannon. I want to check something with you, too. I cannot call him. God, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> Do you still want me to? If you don't call him, I'm just going to use my authority. If you insist, I can call him specially for you, but... Uh-huh. Hmm. Oh, God, I think she'd be SOD'd. <laughs> there was some kind of incomprehensible tension between the two. Will stood there, his left hand still in his pocket, and his right palm glowing and stretched out towards her. Shannon just stood there, her hands still folded politely in front of her, her posture beautiful. And yet it felt oddly as though windswept drops of rain were sparkling and cracking, crackling in midair. I will go call Cannon Coon. Are you absolutely certain? Question mark? Will's expression had remained unchanged the whole time. Shannon's face was still kind and gentle, and yet the tension was as icy as a frozen lake. Beginners in chess will sometimes move their king into check without noticing it. One might mercilessly capture the king in this situation, but high-level players are supposed to calmly tell their opponent about their mistake. If you take one more step, you'll get captured. This was similar to that. I see. So after all, uh... <laughs> I get it. That's enough. <laughs> you guys can take it in turns to run the reception desk. <laughs> Slowly, Will lowered his hand. Thank you for understanding. 
the gl- I, the fucking music and the way that she suddenly went all like mm, does not compute. Yeah, and losing losing the reflection in her eyes, so right. it was just like a solid or right. Like- oh my god, that was that was actually unnerving. I fucking <laughs> loved that. The glow slowly vanished from Will's palm. That completely incomprehensible tension melted away like a sugar cube in water. However, nothing had changed since the beginning. Will's expression and Shannon's expression were the same as they always had been. Oh, are you leaving? Footsteps approached them. It was Leon. Just having a casual conversation. Wanted to ask her something. What could that be? Did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I did. I'm honored to have been of service. That's a shame. So if our thought about Leon and Shannon being the same... Wait, no, 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 no. I, I, like, I was going to say, like, if it was being shown that it's impossibility for Shannon and Cannon to occupy the same place while he's using that authority, then why can Leon be here as well? And then I remembered it's because, the, like, Leon doesn't exist in the same fragment as Shannon and Cannon. Mm. Shannon and Cannon, like, they're, they're both the same person, but, like, Leon doesn't exist in a world that has Shannon and Cannon in mm. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we do get weird shit between it, them, but it, the weird shit is they don't remember each other's existence, even though el- everybody else around acts like it's normal. Exactly, exactly. So, and Leon's just like, yeah, who are these? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a different kind of mm-hmm. incompatibility. If you were looking for an umbrella, I could have gotten you one right away. Did you convince Kinzo? I told him that a rare guest wanted to greet him. It took some negotiating. He usually only talks to mythic guests, but <laughs> he says he'll meet with you. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's so funny. I will never accept Magic the Gathering jokes here. Uh, do you prefer Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh, my God, kid. <laughs> oh, t- t- take, a t- take a seat, buddy. <laughs> Did you tell him that I wanted to ask about Beatrice? Isn't that your job? With a slightly mischievous look, Leon turned away. Will scratched his head and shrugged, looking annoyed. Yeah, well, guess I'll get a chance to try this out at least. Will opened his right hand and showed it to Leon. It was just a hand without anything remotely remarkable about it. Leon's head tilted to the side in bafflement at the strange gesture. Good work. Uh, wait. Your name was... Yeah, see, because they cannot recognize each other. Mm Mm-hmm. It's Shannon. That's right, Shannon. Please take over at the reception desk and make sure you keep warm. Thank you very much, Leon Sama. Shannon bowed deeply in response to Leon's kind words. There's not even a trace of tension in her manner. Let's go, Will. You don't want to miss this chance. The head's mood changes quicker than the autumn sky. Good luck. Here we go. All right. I'm liking this so far. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I I like the way that this is giving us answers. Yeah. I also like that it only, like, we're only able to make it make, make sense if we've already, like, done a fair amount of, like, putzing through, right? Yeah, if we just charged ahead and hadn't gone back and rewatched stuff and rethought our theories and so on, like, e- we would just be, like, out at sea at the moment. Right. Even just the rewatching the first two episodes managed to like help us out a ton with this Mm -hmm. still can't believe you were right on the mark about shannon and canada theory (laughs) anyway uh we'll have to you'll have to see monday for more of this hot sauce bastard and this (laughs) androgynous lad over here i've i've only had leon for two hours but if anything happens to him (laughs) (laughs) yeah basically bye bye everyone bye hold up we've got an addendum here Shower thoughts. We had, we had, well, well, uh, tell, tell, just, just uh, tell, tell, tell them, tell them what you were thinking in the shower. Yeah. So I was in the shower. This is the most important part of the story. Salient. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, the water wasn't salty. What do you mean salient? Okay. Now we're losing the audience. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> you got to you reel them back in. So, so the epitaph, the epitaph, right? It's confusing. We don't know the solution yet. Um, but. A bunch of things have been floated about stuff that might matter, either by us, theories we talked about, or by the characters in the game. And uh, some of those include things like names. 
it was floated that maybe names mattered in some way. I remember they talked about Maria's name maybe, but they never quite found anything that fit together. Uh, there was also the idea that maybe, maybe the key or whatever it is, is, and the, and the sacrifices, and, the key is something like a word. And the sacrifices aren't about sacrificing people. They're about removing letters, removing characters from this 11 letter or 11 character word or mm -hmm. phrase or something. And while we don't get any solution in game, we know that multiple people are able to solve it. And they do so sometime after having these conversations. So probably something in there was basically on the right track in some way. Tangent. The chapel. We know it's important. We don't know why. Yep. Yet. Um, but we know there's some odd stuff about it. Kinzo building a fucking chapel, even though he's not religious at all. He builds it and he never goes there. It doesn't let other people in, but insists the servants clean it regularly for some reason. We know it has something to do with weddings and funerals people talk about, and we get that imagery a bunch, and we don't quite know why that keeps coming up yet. And we know that it has a very odd inscription over the door. We know it was a focus even of some of the folks investigating things around Rokunjima, like Kumasawa. We know she had photos of the inscription above the door. What does that mm -hmm. inscription say? Uh huh. It says, Tell it to him. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, <laughs> it says, um, You can only, it says something along the lines of, You can only answer a chance of a, you can only enter at a chance of a quadrillion to one. You'll only be blessed at a chance of a quadrillion to one, which is a bizarre phrase to put over a chapel. What the fuck does that mean? It's really weird. Uh, on top of that, what's repeated in that twice? Quadrillion. How many, how, many, uh, how many letters in the word quadrillion? I do believe there are 11. So, let's grab that epitaph. Let's head to the first twilight. So, uh, sacrifice the, chicks, the six chosen by the key. I don't know what the fuck that means. So let's just grab the first six letters and see what happens. Let's sacrifice the Q, U, A, D, R, I. Uh -huh. All right. Next twilight. Tear apart the two who are close. Mm -hmm. hmm, that's funny. There's two letter L's that are pretty close in there. Let's rip them apart. Let's take one out. All right. Third uh -huh. twilight. Those who remain will praise my noble name. Uh huh. What letters are left? What's L that name? I. O N. It was right Leon. there the whole goddamn time. <laughs> what if this is it? What if this is real? I, I, I. Here, here's the thing: is that, like that's that's a really cool find yeah. in itself. What convinced me most was what you were saying about the about Kumasawa, uh, specifically looking at that inscription, right? Mm -hmm. Because the inscription, um. Because all this all involves a bunch of wordplay, right? And that that wouldn't necessarily translate because this was written in Japanese at first. But that inscription, the game takes pains to make sure that we understand, was written in English. Because Battler can't fucking read it. Battler can't fucking read English. Also explains why his name is pronounced Leon instead of Lion and why it's pronounced so freaking weirdly. <laughs> now, that's all well and good, right? Because now that we get where the name where Leon comes from, great. Why the hell do we care about this person named Leon? What is the, how does that lead us, you know, to the Golden Land or whatever? Well, the game was <laughs> very kind to remind us uh, to uh, not. I don't think we ever got told this particular detail, but to tell us of a very specific detail within like that last thirty minutes or so of the game. Well, what could that be? Could it be something in the vicinity of that chapel? It's something in the vicinity of that chapel. It's a statue. A statue of a lion facing the woods and this matches the location where we see battler and erica making the doing the final bits and bops in order to get into the golden land they're they're facing the the, the wood the tree line right battler supposedly sees kinzo runs off into the trees mm -hmm. um and as we learn from that the, the lion statue is facing the woods so why is all of this important because you, your solution only gets through the first half of the epitaph, sure right? Sure does. Well, what about all the gouging of the knees and the gouging of the, the stomach and whatnot? It's literally just buttons on a lion statue. It's literally just there, there's, some, there's some buttons you got to dirtle in a certain order on the lion statue, and then, and then it opens up an underground bunker, and, there, and there's the gold. The gold is there. 
That's where the gold is. <laughs> Under the chapel? Under the chapel, probably. <laughs> and it explains so much, right? Because like we, we learned the gold is real. It's described in several different instances of ha- people having to go underground, opening up like a bunker type thing in order to find it, right? And yeah, that that seems to be the solution to at least the part of the epitaph that gets you to the gold. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I still feel like there might be another another solution to that epi- to the epitaph that gets at a deeper meaning of it, or maybe not. But like, th- I fe- that's that's a huge thing that you found. Yeah, I really, I really hope this is real because <laughs> it it would be cool. It would be very cool. I think, and I think this might be as close to confirmation as we get from the game because the game isn't just gonna fucking tell us unless it does. Uh, it, yeah, I guess so. Now, this does raise a couple of other questions. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Leon, we expect is uh the child that Kinzo gave to Natsuhi to raise. Yep. Um, the epitaph. Or the the chapel and presumably the inscription on it was built like when Kinzo originally got to Rokunjima. The epitaph that uses the inscription on the chapel as an integral part of it was added like maybe two three years ago, right? Yeah, I don't think we get the exact time scale, but right. it was recent that the portrait went up. Much more recent, right? So that like did the d- did Leon. Nay Sayo, nay Shannon, nay Yosia, name Canon, nay Canon, right? <laughs> Come back to the island and have a hand in adding that epitaph to the portrait using kind of like the clue that was added on the quadrillion to one thing, kind of ex post facto to make it really clear where the gold was. Like, was that, was, were they named Leon from the beginning or did they even have a name when they were given to Natsuhi? Uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot of uh still kind of like bits and bobs that don't really fit together right now. Was the epitaph ever really a challenge to become the head? And if it wasn't, then what the fuck's going on with the fragment that Leon is apparently from, et cetera, right? et cetera. And if Leon had a hand in actually making it, setting it up, it seems kind of cheap for them to come back and win it for the <laughs> Oh wait, no, because because in that in that fragment, in that fragment, they uh they are they they presumably, presumably just grew up, and since Kinzo well, uh, being raised by Natsuhi, and apparently are friendly with Kinzo, and that probably made that Kinzo was just like, yeah, no, this is my successor, and probably skipped the whole thing. We don't even know if the epitaph exists for Leon. Maybe. I still feel like it'd be so poetically appropriate, though, if the whole reason the funeral's being held is because the epitaph got solved. Then finally, sleep peacefully, my beloved witch Beatrice. And Kinzo's like, it makes sense. oh my god, the epitaph's been solved. Put to her final rest in Beatrice the Golden Land. Beatrice has been put to her final rest. Right, which is underneath the chapel. Yeah, and so they gotta have the funeral, but the coffin's empty, of course, because... I, because... Uh, yeah, what I would be interested in is whether or not the epitaph still exists in Leon's timeline. Yeah. Because because Leon obviously can't come from the same fragment that most that or even like a closely related one of all the fragments we've seen so far, like 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 uh, like uh, Bernie said, like the cat box has been widened. Yep, and which is why why we suspect it was going back that far. So if Leon growing up and being raised by Natsuhi within the Ushuromia household leads to there being no epitaph, I. Th- think we can like be pretty damn sure then that that uh shannon and canon are in some way responsible for the writing of it Hmm. and that part of it is they're wanting to get the family to acknowledge what had happened to them from natsuhi so long ago Mm. anyway um it's a whole lot of thoughts cool thoughts but we couldn't we couldn't let this episode go without adding those on since we they since you came out of the shower like hold on hold on this is important (laughs) we promised we wouldn't stop thinking even about the shit like the epitaph that we thought we'd never possibly be able to solve so Uh, there y'all go this is as close to an answer as we've got so far i hope I, i hope 
I hope it's it's somewhat satisfactory. Again, I feel I feel like maybe we cheated a little bit by because now it like it's like oh they're showing us the answers supposedly, but no, you made that big you made that fucking connection. That was super important. I hope I, I hope not. it's important. It could also st- just be pareidolia, so we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment, and subscribe, and subscribe.